Chapter 21, The Promise of Spring By spring, the valley had begun to warm. The poplar trees had burst into bloom, and a tiny miracle in the campaign for education had taken place right in my own home. My mother had started learning to read. While my father and I were busy crisscrossing SWAT, speaking out on behalf of the girls of our valley, my mother had started working with one of the teachers at the Kushal Primary School. Whenever Miss Wolfot had a break in her schedule, my mother would visit, her notebook and pencil in hand, until gradually the strange squiggles and symbols on the page revealed themselves to her. She was soon able to read Urdu and had started speaking English. My mother loved schoolwork even more than I did, if that was possible. My father said it was because she had been deprived of learning for so long. In the evenings, she and I would often do our homework together, sipping tea, two generations of passion women happily huddled over their books. Meanwhile, my own schoolwork had actually slipped a bit because of all my travels. I could hardly believe it, but Malka Enor had come in first the previous term. And, of course, Kushal seized the opportunity to tease me. While you were busy becoming the most famous student in Pakistan, your rival stole your crown at home, he said. But it hardly mattered. My friends and I were in high spirits because exams were finally over and our class was about to go on our first field trip in years. During Fazlullah's reign... All the field trips had been canceled since girls were not to be seen in public. Now, finally, our beloved springtime ritual was back. We traveled by bus to the famous White Palace, a wonder built of white marble so unearthly it floated like a cloud. My friends and I stared in awe at its rooms and gardens. Then we ran around, chasing one another in the deep green for a forest. When we came upon a crystal waterfall, we all posed for pictures. One girl splashed another. The drops of water lit the air like diamonds. It was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. And we all sat dreamily for a while, just listening to the rushing water. Then Maniba started splashing me again. I wasn't in the mood, so I told her to stop. But she did it again and again. My father called for me, so I walked off. When I returned, she was angry with me for walking away. And once again, our typical foolishness put a damper on the day. We rode home in the bus, sulking in our separate seats. The next morning, a man came to our door with a photocopied letter. As my father read it to us, the color drained from his face. Dear Muslim brothers, there is a school, the Kushal School, which is a center of vulgarity and obscenity. They take girls for picnics to different resorts. Go and ask the manager of the White Palace Hotel, and he will tell you what these girls did. He put down the piece of paper. It has no signature, he said. We sat stunned. We knew nothing improper had happened on our field trip. Our phone began to ring. The letters, apparently, had been distributed all over the neighborhood and pasted on the walls of the mosque near our school. It was clear to us now that someone had spied on us during our school trip, and someone had gone to a lot of trouble to spread lies about us in our school. There was no denying it. The Taliban might have been defeated, but their beliefs were still spreading.